The Texas Rangers just got done playing their home opener and the game ended in a controversial and repugnant way. This is the final at bat and the game determining moment. And this was something that if you sat out in the Texas heat for four hours and you dealt with the overflowing concession stands despite the fact that it was the first time the game wasn't sold out in years and years since 96 this is the first non-sellout opening day game yet somehow all the concession stands were overcrowded and ran out of the items this was one of those days where they left the roof open and it just made the ballpark absolutely cook it was so hot it's one of those games where just like at the old stadium you're running around looking for water. You're like, after you get your one drink, you're like filling up that little souvenir cup with tap water because it's so hot. It made absolutely no sense for them to have the roof open today. So the Rangers established a lead after falling behind by a run early. Nice start from Taylor Hearn. He was somewhat effective in the sense that he only gave up a run. And he didn't really walk many guys, but he gave up eight hits. It was a very long start where he sort of battled, even though it was four innings. And the runtime of this game just marched on and on and on. There were significant lulls in the game. But near the end, it heated up, and the Rangers' bullpen, as usual, blew another lead. This is something the Rangers' bullpen has done a lot, and something that is going to plague them throughout the season because they have a plethora of young pitches pitchers as Adelius Garcia swings at a slider low and away and goes down 0-2 and we're about to get to the inciting incident as down two runs the Rangers have runners on first and second and El Bombi the electric Cuban has been great all day and he is going to do his best to try to drive the runners home and walk off on the home opener Always exciting to get to come home for the home opener as he hits a line drive, screaming to third, goes over to the second baseman, and it goes into the corner. So the ball actually bounced off of Garcia as it was an errant throw, and the run will score. The runner was out from at second, but the run will score, and Garcia is going to get to second base. Now, Bud Black is going to come waddling out here, and... This is going to be an awful little moment where basically he's going to sit here and challenge and say, well, I want two things challenged. I want the play challenged, and I also want, oh, what do you know, a slide rule challenge. And you might be thinking, well, how could it be both? Well, that's what the guy says here whenever he gets on his little microphone and announces what they're going to be challenging. And here we see Bud Black saying, hey, uh, just look at that. Like, we have the challenge. It was very clearly not duplicitous, but we'll learn. This is just so That's lame. Right. This is how you do dark. not want challenges used, where they just use them at the end of the game to try to take an undeserved win. And New York is going to be dim-witted. So you hear it there. He mumbled. He's challenging the play of the slide rule as well as the play. And there was really no point in rewinding it to show you because his mic didn't really work and it was sort of an echo. So this is one of the dumbest things about baseball challenges is it's not like NFL challenges where they look at it under the hood and the refs there make the determination. Challenges in the MLB, they just send them to New York like they wait and we can see the slide here. Mitch Garver starts his slide. Notice the initial sliding foot goes straight to the bag. So he was clearly aiming for the bag. And there was that rule created after Chase Utley tried to basically maim and kill that Mets player, Ruben Tejada, in the 2015 ALDS, where he slid like three whole yards to the right of second base and destroyed his leg. And what was interesting about that is that really forced this rule change where it's like, well, you're not allowed to blow up the guy fielding when he's trying to turn a double play. Well, what did that equate to? Well, it made it where we have this sort of weird rule where we can see Mitch Garver goes straight towards the bag, does everything he can to hold up, sticks his right foot in the ground, 
turns his body as to lessen the contact, drags his right hand. Garver does everything he can to not go into the guy's legs, to try to prevent an injury, to try to essentially not break up the double play if you're thinking about like a Ty Cobb or a Billy Martin type player, they're going to go in hard and slide directly into the bag, but through the bag, sort of hitting the second baseman. Notice that's distinctly different and clean in its own way. That's different than the Chase Utley slide where you're going way, way off, where Mitch Garver goes directly into the bag and then does everything he can to stop his momentum, thus making it a clean slide. And he knew he was out. If it was more close, he would have had his left hand not only sticking out more, but staying closer to the base. Some people might make the argument, well, he wasn't touching the base. Well, he knew he was out. So he did everything he could to lessen his momentum and sort of turn. Overturn. There was a slide rule violation at second base. That runner's out. The runner at first base is out. Ball game wow. over. Yeah. yeah. And the Rockies win it. How do you like that? So they say the slide rule, and that's sort of a repugnant disgrace whenever you take a look at something like Chase Utley going three yards away from second base to blow a guy's leg up, being a dirt bag, and then acting like he didn't care about it after. And Mitch Garver obviously trying to stop his momentum as he's sliding into the base. And that's the only reason why he didn't have more of a left hand extended towards the bag after he went directly towards it and made direct contact. The slide rule is there to prevent people from going way out of the baseline and blowing up a baseman who is trying to make a double play and you're preventing him from doing so by aggressively sliding at his legs. That's not what we saw here. What we saw here was a guy directly slide into the base and then whenever he slid into the base, did everything he could to stop momentum and preserve the legs of his opponent. And this is a guy, Mitch Garver, an injury-prone, beefy catcher who stopping on a dime isn't easy. And we can see by the way that he turned his body with the slide that he wasn't trying to blow up the second baseman. If you're trying to make a play like Billy Martin, you're going to go straight through the guy. You're going to target the base, sure, but your body is going to end up like on the other side of the first base bag towards center field, whereas Mitch Garver basically stopped completely, didn't go through the guy. And how are you going to make this call when you don't even get toppled? Like Garver had so little momentum going into the guy's legs that you didn't even get toppled over or, you know, displaced, much less completely upended. It's just a disgraceful way to end a ball game. And whenever you had the boomer detractors talking about how oh, we don't want replays in baseball because it takes the human element out of it, yes, but more importantly what happens is you have ticky-tack things where people will just challenge to challenge. And because this is not on the pressure of the umps at the game, it was just handed off to New York who has no problem throwing these games for teams or duplicitously doing things to try to push a rule change in a way that is sort of ostentatious and dishonest, they would do that like it's nothing. They don't care about this Rangers-Rockies game. They're not going to hear anything press-wise about this on a national level. This isn't Sox-Yankees. They would maybe think twice about doing this in Sox-Yanks, but yeah, there's supposedly like people who are going to defend this are going to say, look how he stopped before he's going through his legs there, just completely duplicitous. People are going to sit here and be like, oh, the slide rule, player safety. Garver not only executed a clean slide, but was trying to stop before he made full contact. This is the rare example of replay going too far and affecting the game in a negative way that's not just let's get the call right. This is cowards in New York, as Hank Hill would say, duplicitously ruining a game, an opening day game that over 35,000 people attended and sat out in the heat hours and hours to watch, and they couldn't watch it clean or legitimately many of them because of duplicitous blackout restrictions on MLB TV, 
and the fact that Bally Sports Southwest, which is a joke, isn't carried by many ISPs. So you have a large contingency of fans who can't watch the game legitimately, trekked out to the ballpark from all over Texas, and this is how you're going to end the game for them. New York deciding it. Thanks, baseball. Why aren't people watching? Yeah, I wonder why.